Cromwell Hospital in London, a transplant patient's body was chronically rejecting her recently replaced liver. A nationwide search located a suitable donor organ in Hull, and so began a life or death race against time to bring that organ to London. The Metropolitan Police were given the important task of completing the last vital stage in this journey. They had just 35 minutes to cover 29 miles across central London on a busy Friday afternoon. And that journey is the subject of this police camera action special. Filmed from an escorting patrol car, our story begins at Junction 7 on the M11 motorway outside London. The officers anxiously wait for the liver to arrive. The aircraft has been delayed in Hull due to fog. The pressure is on. We'd been having a refreshment break. And we were suddenly told that the aircraft had taken off from Hull, was due at Stansted within a matter of minutes, so it was much a case of drop everything, leave the breakfast, and just go. Alpha Lima 4, Alpha Lima 4. The Essex car, as we were aware, had gone on to the runway at Stansted Airport, which was Junction 8, and they had to run alongside the aircraft to pick up the package. We saw the Essex police car coming down the M11. We moved forward, took up position, far side of the roundabout, at the top of the slip road. They drew in behind us and we transferred the organ from their car to our car. It took me by surprise when I made, went to make the changeover from the Essex police car and I realised that it was a very large picnic box. Uh, most organ runs you expect to find stainless steel containers. We were told that the liver had to be delivered to the hospital at 12.30pm. As we began to move off, I looked at the clock in the car and it was 11.56. I began to wonder then if we had enough time in which to carry out our run. And time was indeed a crucial factor in the journey. If you look at the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll see a clock showing the actual time ticking by. And on the left we've added a countdown clock, showing how many minutes are remaining. Throughout the programme, this map will show you the patrol car's progress on its chosen route to get the liver to the hospital in the quickest time possible. And if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see that on this part of the journey, the police are already up to speed. From this section on the M11 motorway, they have 27 miles to cover in just 33 minutes. As soon as we hit the M11 southbound, uh, we're confronted with roadworks. Uh, it was down to two lanes, and a lorry pulled out in front of us. And that's even with two police cars, headlights, blue lights, sirens, whalers, and still uh, this lorry driver just stayed out there. I presume he didn't realise what was going on and of course that caused a little bit of frustration because we had to average about 60 miles an hour from start to finish and this should have been relatively the easy part of it where we could actually go time. I didn't realise until this run took place that uh, organs can last uh, for X number of minutes depending on what that organ is and I think a liver, I was told, uh, could last for about 12 hours.
We were travelling at speeds of up to 120 miles an hour on the motorway travelling towards London. Not the kind of speed that we travel at every day, and certainly not to be recommended to anyone to try. But again, our training shows us that we can be capable of this. Only in exceptional circumstances would we use these high speeds. And this was a very exceptional circumstance. As the motorway ends, the police enter the east end of London. There are now 26 minutes remaining and they have 15 miles still to cover. Although their route has been carefully planned, they have no idea what problems they can expect up ahead or if they can possibly make it in time. We knew where we had had to finish up and we planned a route uh, which was acceptable to Scotland Yard, bearing in mind they knew all the traffic flow and the conditions. And then when we were sitting at Junction 7, we'd pick the route and subject to us being told to, to change routes, that's the one we were going to stick at. Um, I think Graham had an A to Z in front and certainly Steve who was with me, he had an A to Z. And then we come up to the first set of traffic lights and that's where the first bit of congestion uh, caught us. We wormed our way through there but uh, that was coming down to about two miles an hour I think you'll see. And believe it or not, I was aware of another car coming through behind us. Um, he obviously saw the gap, and when we went to Blakehall Road, uh, there was a police officer there who took us over on the red light, and that's obviously what stopped the vehicle behind us. But I just thought to myself, you know, the cheek of it. As the police get further into London, 13 miles away from the hospital, they move into more residential areas. The streets are becoming narrower and busier. It's not just other drivers that the police are worried about. The safety of pedestrians becomes a major concern. Um, we then went into the Green Man roundabout and there was another patrol car there. And then it really got difficult when we went down High Road Leytonstone because I took the wrong side of the road. And I think it stages there we were over 50 down there. I mean, if a pedestrian had come out between the traffic, um, I, I don't know that I could have avoided them. And we just hoped that the noise would have been sufficient. Uh, I had the whale up going, and I think Bill had the yelper going, trying to inform the public that there were two police vehicles. Throughout the journey, we did not give up hope at all. But the one thought in your mind.